Fucking hell, man. What's happening, troops? Welcome to the video. Welcome to a day in the life of your favourite online coach, Bradley Walker. So right now, I'm dieting down for a little video shoot that I've got. It's a very quick cut that I'm doing. It's very harsh, but I'm going to show you is basically what I'm eating to shred some body fat really, really quickly to just help me lean up so I look nice and tasty for this little video shoot. I'm going to get some really good quality content. Cannot wait. So I've got a lot of different things planned today. So obviously, I've got to do some work. I'll no show you that boring shit. I've got a physio appointment booked. I've also got a workout planned. And then I'm going to show you some meals that we've got going on as well. But in the meantime, look at this. The temptation is really, 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 really high right now. We can see this. I'm absolutely starving. Right, look at this big bad boy. I got this for my mum. Um, she's just back for holiday. And she, she's just an absolute saint. So I thought I'm going to treat my mum to a wee coffee and a wee cake. Surprise her with it. So hopefully she loves it. Yo, so that's me. Um, just finished quite a lot of the work for the day. It's like about half two just now. My appointment's at three. So I want to just quickly touch on um, what I'm going to be doing with the diet. Just so you're kind of aware of like, how I'm going about this kind of sh mini shred before this little kind of shoot. So I've been on a lean bulk, of course. Um, I've not really gained much body fat, if any. However, like if I can just taper in just a little bit more for the shoot, I always will because it makes you look bigger on camera, which is this weird thing. But anyway, how I'm basically doing this, right, is I'm chopping down the calories first of all. And where I'm basically chopping the calories down from, as I'm already on a high fat, high protein diet, I'm keeping the protein exactly where it's at. So where I'm actually chopping away from on this diet is going to be mainly um, my fats and my carb source. Now, I have quite a different approach to my diet right now from what you're probably following. The only kind of carb source I'm having is at dinner time and I'm usually having like a full pack of rice or like some potatoes, something along the lines, okay? So that's how I basically chop away from my diet. I'm going to chop away some of the fat sources throughout the day. So for example, I'm not having my avocado with my eggs, I'm not having the peanut butter in my smoothie, which is probably like off the top of my head, I think that's about 500 odd calories. And then I'm also chopping down my carb source as well at dinner. So instead of like a full rice, I'm having like a half pack of rice. So I'm about five to 600 calories into a deficit there. And that's just gonna help me kind of shred down as quick as I can. And then the last thing I'm really changing is just try to keep my steps as high as I can each and every day. Now this is just a little quick fix, it's not going to drastically change my body, but because I'm already lean, these small changes can show up quite a lot in the camera. But the leaner you are, the more your food manipulates like the way your body looks. So now we've got to go to physio. Right, so see my shoulder, right? See basically, remember I told you last time when I was pressing? My, my right shoulder almost feels like unstable. Huh? Get me when I'm pressing up. Yeah. Last thing you were in about the kind of break the tear cuff, the tear cuff, right? Yeah. But I'll hold the tear as it was on last. Aye, but I mean, so my left feels pure stable. My right just feels like as if, let's see when I'm like trying to wait up and stuff. That feels something doesn't feel right about it. Right, yeah. so don't give me any kind of major grief, but it just doesn't feel as if it's sitting right when I'm pressing. So do you do in the gym to stabilise it? So, so we did. Ah, uh, so you have a tear cuff work. Yeah. So obviously some bad stuff, but like nothing to make major external rotations. Did this one to kind of warm up as well, but no way. But no, just weight band. No, just body weight. This one. No. So band. Band. So it's band the machine. So the machine will be stuck here. Yeah. You come down like this. So yeah, the cable machine's here. You grab the handle down. Nice and slow controlled. Slow control up and down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slow controlled machine here. Down. Medium rotator, yeah, machine still here. Battle rotator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you not see the video that we posted as well? So the, the band, banded work as well? Ah, so I seen the band. Yeah, the so banded work, so stabiliser again. Using it as a stabiliser, pushing it, and swap, swap the arms. Makes sense. Check. So you see that, check, like, can I start or end the workout doing this stuff as well? 100% start. 100% start. Yeah, cool. 100% to start. Right, so you have to wait the other rotator cuff as well. Ah, so you're saying so you can add the bulk yeah. strength up at the same yeah. time? Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's sound. That's sound, that's not. I'll do that. I'll definitely do that. Um, and do you want to make sure some pain there? Yes. I've got to go back in there. Alright, so we've got a wee drop on the rotator cuff. We've just worked on the lateral rotators. Now we're going to work on the medial rotator subscapularis. It's a wee bit tight to work in the hands are out, so long and short wave radio frequencies. Get rid of some of the metabolic waste that's lying in the muscles first, but we'll go in there because it's very, very, very painful to work on. Check this out. I can tell it's going to be sore. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to be very painful to work on. <laughs> You're making me try to eat them now. <laughs> 
And this generates a lot of heat as well as you call the field. Ah, right. Yeah. So we can have a good bit of heat through there as well. Straighten down that metabolic rate so it's not in your muscle tissues. That's it. Simple as that. Okay. I'm going to go in there with the fingers. Sit right underneath there. Sweet glutes is a massive, massive problem in the industry you now for, for us. How do people get weak glutes? Uh, a lot of people call it glute amnesia. Sitting their asses too much, basically. So what's, what's that kind of common sign of weak glutes in? Uh, uh, low, back, low back pain, uh, knee pain, the SI joint keep moving all the time, so you get a lot of discomfort. It feels sometimes like a, a disc derangement. They're getting like a, they call it sciatica. Uh, they call it sciatica, or the doctor will call it sciatica. It's actually usually a sacral torsion. If it's if it's the SI joint, it's moved anyway. We call it sacral torsion, uh, sacral dysfunction, the SI joint dysfunction. Right, that's going to be sore. Uh, you bet the elbow and the glute meat. You bet the glute man. And you obviously work your glutes a wee bit because you good muscle tone there and you're really fucking tight as well. <laughs> Which is a good sign. Right. Now we're going to do an SI joint correction. You're sitting a wee bit deep in the left hand side there. I'll get you to lie on your left shoulder. We're just heading to the gym just now, it's 7 o'clock, quite a late one for my usual kind of training time but it's been a bit of yeah, an all over the place day, however, we still progress and we still move forward no matter what I'd like them to actually be, but again it's because we're getting hard towards the end of it. 
Then we've got chest fly. Again, nice slow and controlled reps. That's what we've got to emphasize through this. Nice slow and controlled reps all the way through. And then finishing up here with a little bit of decline pressing as well. And then we'll go into some posing because I had to show you how lean I was. Push workout complete. Um, my lot's only been a couple of days in the diet. I'm feeling a little bit leaner to be honest. Go, oh, that's going in reverse, which is good. Um, but aye, right, so let's see how this goes. Um, now, something I just want to touch on on my my way back from here um, is the fact that I've also quit marijuana. Marijuana feels weird to say. I've quit weed. Um, stop smoking because I kind of feel as if like it, I felt as if it was holding me back a wee bit and that's kind of why I stopped like I felt as if it was making me a little bit slow a little bit lazy a little bit too comfortable in my current circumstances and like so see for example like when I'd be sober I'd be so itching to like, just be living a better life to be so much more successful to be the person that I dream about being and then I'd get high, it'd be kind of like everything would be okay, it's, uh, it's not that bad, it's nice and chill. And another thing that really happened to me a lot when I was smoking is I would binge on my diet. And it used to, like, it used to tear me up inside so, so much because I would be so disciplined when I was sober, going really strict diets and do really well. And then I would get high one night and ruin like a week's of progress just for eating so much rubbish. And it just... But honestly, it felt as if I had a conflicting personality trait or something. Like I thought, do I really want to get that lean, or am I just like, am I just kidding myself on? Like, what am I doing here? And there was just such a conflicting argument in my head. And then I used to say to myself, "Oh, I don't have a problem. I'm, I'm not addicted, or I can, I can stop any time, or I don't want to stop smoking." And like, I kind of felt as if I just made excuses for not wanting to stop all the time. And then basically, like one day. My mum kind of was making a point of saying like, I just don't like you smoking anymore and I posted on Instagram that I was smoking the joint and she hated it, she went after nut about it um, because like, people in her work scene and all that and whatever and I do understand that's like, it's probably no great for her which I didn't think about at the time I just felt as if like, maybe it's time to stop and I, I, I have kind of stopped, if you've watched the vlogs for long enough, I did stop smoking in January um, for a full month and I've went through weeks of like no smoking and stuff like that as well but I've kind of always just kind of always wanted to go back to smoking it was kind of comfortable i just gone chilling with my pals chuffing was, was easy but now that I've stopped I actually am pretty fucking proud and to be honest right the first like few days maybe a week was the hardest um, because I was like oh could, could got be gone, but see now that I've built up so many days of not smoking, I don't want to smoke anymore. Like, I, I do enjoy the, the act of smoking, but or I did enjoy the act of smoking, but like, now I kind of think about all the negative connotations. It just makes me feel groggy, it makes me lazy, it makes me like just slower in general. I'm no, it makes me comfortable in this situation that I want to get out of, and like. It was just so counterproductive for all my kind of massive goals for me to be smoking weed. Because um, like it basically, like, as soon as you smoke a joint, you're no, you're no able to operate on 100. percent And if I want to like escape the matrix and fucking become like the fucking person that I want to be, like how can I be missing out in days? I need to make every single day fucking count, and I need to be 
grafting towards my goals every single day. Otherwise, people who are working harder are just going to beat me there. And that's something I can't accept. I need to become Scotland's number one YouTuber. Like, there's nobody else who's going to be able to compete with me. I need to become that person. And to be that person, I need to be on my A-game every single fucking day. And for that, I need to stop smoking weed. And that's just it. Will I smoke in future? Maybe if I go to like Amsterdam or something. But like... Realistically, I think no, and I'm actually quite happy about it. I'm really happy about it to be honest. And I like how it makes me feel, it makes me feel like fucking mentally strong and like proud as well of myself. And like that being said, as well, I've also been like 100% sober. I've not touched one single thing since deciding to smoke, stop smoking weed. And like that also gives me a lot of pride because I used to envy people who went out and stayed sober and then. Recently I've been going to like raves and shit and staying sober. Say recently I went to like one rave and stayed sober. But like, I'm just happy that I could be that person now. And like, hopefully, like, what I'm doing can help motivate maybe you to stop smoking. And you to maybe go to nights sober. Because it's just the, the done thing in Scotland to, to spend time with your pals and get fucked up on booze or drugs. And that's it. And I heard somebody basically saying, right, like, see if, you're, see if you need to be out of your fucking tits. See if you need to be out your face to enjoy your time with your pals, or they're really your pals. And that's a quite a good point. I've got friends who I've been pals with for years, and I hold them all close to my heart because there's been so many good times with them. But I don't spend any time sober with them ever. And that made me realise, like, do I only hang out with them to go and get on it? Hopefully no. But, aye. That's the kind of rant with that. Sober now. Don't smoke weed. No having a drink until I reach a certain goal that I have in my mind. I don't want to share the goal with anybody, I want to keep it personal to myself because I talk a lot about a lot of things, but this one I'll keep dear to me. And when I achieve it, I'm going to have a wee whiskey that I've got sitting on top of my, my bedside drawer. I'm going to sip it, sitting on my pal, Michael Beaton's foundation, little coaster, and uh, I'll enjoy a, a wee drink on Mac. So, that's my kind of goal, that's what's going to happen. Watch this fucking space, I'm the fucking boy.